Well, welcome to White Pill Radio, the every other episode version of Theology on Air that is post-apologetic, ultimately hopeful, applied theology that looks at news and current events uh, with a Christian worldview, of course. I like to say that this is blessed talk, but not happy talk. It sounds so old fashioned, but also lovely. Blessed, like... Well, you know, these translations of the Beatitudes are like, uh-huh. blessed are the poor, yeah. like, no, happy are the poor. No, 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 no. Those are different things. Anyway, um, <laughs> but I'm Evan McClanahan. I'm the pastor here at First Lutheran, joined, as always, by Sarah, Sarah Stone. Sarah Stone. Hi, guys. Executive Director of Theology on Tap, Houston's Theology on Tap. For now, we're going to have the name change, though. We can announce yep. that. Come to the yep. party November 14th. Go to HoustonTOT.com to learn more about that. You can submit a name still. Yeah, you can submit a name almost up until November 14th. We'll and be how, announcing the winner. How many submissions have we had? We're we had? almost at 300. Wow. <laughs> that sounded like a fake wow, but I actually think it's a, no, it's that, a wow-worthy. I'm, I'm, in, I'm in it to be a real wow. I mean, so basically there are 300 I mean, potential. many of them are jokes. Okay. Which I'm here for. Still, they're, yeah. the, some are quite funny. So yes. we, we should do a whole episode on like, all, like just read through the names. Well, we, so worth, at yeah. the party, we are going to read through some of the funny ones. Yeah. Yeah. And just for, just for funsies. The party is going to be really fun. If you're listening to this, you should come. If you live in the Houston area, we're going to yes. have like life-size battle bots you can climb into and battle other people. We're going to have all kinds of fun games where we have a little bit of fun with the, the, like being oppressed by the, no, no, no. I was going to say oh. like, what's the, what's the word I'm looking for? A rivalry. So yes, between rivalry. Catholicism and Protestantism. That's what we call it. So we'll it. have some games and some snacks and uh, drinks and yeah. it'll be fun. Some trivia. So you could go back yep. and listen to our Reformers podcast series and win the trivia. Yes, Good absolutely. Time. Absolutely. And we should say normally for this format of White Pill Radio, we like to have four of us or three mm-hmm. of us, but none of the other crew could make it. You know, we changed the time around, we changed the day around <laughs> and nobody could make it. Nobody wanted to, you know, whatever. So uh, it's just the two of us, you know, the show must go on. So hopefully we'll have three or four of us normally, but hey. Evan is just going to pretend to be a flaming liberal for the sake yes, of the episode. I'm That'll going to fun. try to provide some kind of counterbalance, <laughs> but we do have a lot of stuff to talk about. We've got AI yeah. deepfakes, we've got the Israel Hamas situation sort of coming to America. And in a way we've got um, border crisis. You know, a border crisis. Yeah, anyway, lots of really, really spicy things going on. We're going to do our best to do all of that with the Christian worldview. Um, so you ready to jump in? Ready. Okay. Well, this was a story that caught my eye in the Wall Street Journal. We have talked about artificial intelligence quite a bit. I, I've written a couple of essays on it um, at the... Um, my my cousin's website that I write for every man commentary and oh that's so sexist every man commentary well you know I can't it's even with just, you yeah it's 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 a it's a populist tribute think of it that way um, <laughs> like Willie Lowman and Death of a Salesman um, he was the everyman anyway um, and uh, I don't know the church blog the whatever the name of it is anyway AI so this was a story that came out of New Jersey uh, the title of it is it's it's tough to even think about, but it's going on. It's going to be our reality, which is fake nudes of real students cause an uproar at a New Jersey high school. I'll just read a couple paragraphs so we get the gist of it. Uh, When girls at Westfield High School in New Jersey found out boys were sharing nude photos of them in group chats, they were shocked. And not only because it was an invasion of privacy, the images weren't real. Students said that one or more classmates used an online tool powered by artificial intelligence to make the images then shared them with others. The discovery has sparked uproar in Westfield, an affluent town outside New York City. So, let's see what could go wrong. Um, you know, people with the means to create fake nudes of their classmates and spread pictures around. I mean, I guess you can just bypass the whole sexting thing now. Yeah. Um, you can, you know, just create images. Um, it I, says later in the article that, like, someone, when they were researching it, just went on their phone to see, like, how hard it would be. And basically, there were several apps that they could quickly do it on their own. Like, yeah. it's not hard to do. Like, you could go do it right now if you wanted to. Yeah. I mean... It's insane. There's... A, so, so <clears throat> at, at, at one point, I wrote an article where I was despairing of the future of AI, how it's going to kill community, it's going to replace churches, and, you know, we're going to have chatbots as friend, and all this sort of thing. Uh, and, and I still think a lot of that is true for certain people. But there's a, a hopeful part of me that basically says, well, I think that AI is going to be like the War of the Worlds machines, where they come out of the ground, but like water destroys them or something <laughs> stupid like that, or... A virus. Yeah, yeah. And so I kind of wonder if, like... AI is like it presents all these difficulties, but like at the end of the day, it's not going to really 
pack the punch that people think. And I bring that up because one of one of my hopes for these kinds of things in the interim, where AI is a very powerful tool and can do really terrible things, is that maybe we'll get bored of what it's capable of doing, you know? But maybe teenage boys will never get bored of this and it's never going away. So, or not just bored or maybe just ev- you're just trustful of everything. Yeah. Which maybe is good. Well, so it could go both ways, right? So like let's say – Let's say AI is so good in a couple of years that you can basically create an image of a person, of a man going into a woman's home, a married man going into another woman's home, right? Oh, video evidence mm-hmm. of, of him doing something and he can say, wait a minute, that's AI. It's a deep um, on the yeah. other hand, maybe it really is him, but he can still say, no, it's not me, it's AI. You know, we, if we can't yeah. tell the difference between what's real and what's not, in the end, I would, I, I wouldn't think that you know, but I'm an old man at this point. I wouldn't think there'd be really anything exciting about seeing something that you know is fake. Um, if you know it's just computer generated. Except look at the porn industry. Yeah. That, I mean, right. that may not be as fake because it's, you know, real people, but it's, it is a counterfeit. Of, we just talked about this in yesterday's podcast. I don't know how they're coming out, but um, yeah, the counterfeit version people seem to really like. It's a multi-billion dollar right. industry. It's good enough. It's not good enough for Christians. So ultimately, right. my hope is that the whole world will become Christian. That's kind of my solution to every problem. And that, A, <laughs> we would not look at these sorts of things. We would not create them. We would not share them. We would defend the right of the person who's being abused in this situation. But I guess my question is like, well, what do we do to prevent it? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the article talks about how there were different sort of reactions. Some people were like, these boys need to be, you know, punished harshly. And other people were like, oh, it's just boys being boys. Right. And as a woman, like... The idea of myself or my daughter, because these are young girls, or high schoolers, um, having their character besmirched, uh, I hate the word besmirched because it sounds so old fashioned, whatever, tarnished, mm-hmm. um, it is infuriating. Like, I want these boys locked up. I know that's a, I'm the burn it down girl these days. And I, I understand that, you know, I don't want their well, whole it's, lives to be ruined because of this. Well, decision, he, but. Here, here's the crazy thing is that we've, we've become so tolerant of, um, something like uh, child pornography. You know, mm-hmm. that that should be a death penalty offense. The owning of it, the sharing of it, much less the creating of it in any way, that should be, in my view, a death penalty offense. To harm a child in a sexual way is, mm-hmm. is just so awful. There should be no tolerance for it at all. I think that's definitely justifiable biblically. Um, and yet what we see is that people get slaps on the wrist, you know, a few months in prison or no prison, just parole, and they go out and they, you know, maybe they have to wear an ankle bracelet, you know, but basically they're free to do it. So if 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 people really engaging in child pornography, which is, by the way, arguably what this is, yeah, right? It's the stepping stone, at yeah. least. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, you you know, if like an 18-year-old guy is dating a 16-year-old girl and they take inappropriate pictures of one another, then... Um, and they share that there have been people arrested for child mm-hmm, pornography, mm-hmm. you know, because technically that's what it is. So whether or not AI would pass that test, obviously a defense lawyer would say, you know, it's not real. So how can I be guilty of anything? But I think we should treat it that way. But when we don't treat real offenders doing really horrible things to children, then like, how can we ever? How, yeah. how are we going to treat? So I think we have just become so tolerant of so many crimes that I, um, I, I that that we we need a revival of old-fashioned biblical law or something or or an an understanding of justice, just an intoleration, if that's a word, or lack of toleration for this kind of thing. So I'm with you there. I'm like, I don't care what you do. Lock them up. I don't care. Tarnish their record forever. Make them make these elitists who live outside of New York City unavailable to ever get that that job at the white shoe law firm or the <laughs> or the or the capital management, uh, you know, job at their, at you know, whatever on Wall Street, you know, tarnish their record, put their names out there. Uh, what they've done is so bad. I think. I, yeah, I, I have really no tolerance. But here's what I here's kind of a church angle of it, which is. We are going to need to be in actual Christian communities where we actually know each other, love each other, care about each other, because this is coming for all of us. Hmm. I hate to say it, but if you're a public figure, if you're on, I mean, we're on the internet right now. Our image is out there. It's been out there many, many times. People can take our image and do the same thing. There's nothing stopping anybody from doing this to any of us. Mm -hmm. Um, And so um, I can imagine, in fact, a a while back, I got an email from some guy in Russia, supposedly, who said, I have compromising material on you. And if you don't pay such and such, then I'll share it with your neighbors or whatever. Now, I just deleted it and went on with my life and never heard from it again. But because it's a 
scam to get money. But um, I actually had my pictures used years ago. I think I've told you the story to catfish someone out of his retirement oh, money. I've forgotten that. Yeah. They weren't new so you, pictures, just to so, clear the air yeah, on that. Um, so, so you know it's. I'm, I'm you, still you, friends with him on Facebook. He may actually watch this episode. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. He contacted me in like, I don't know, 2012 or something. And someone had used pictures that I had put up on dating profiles. Yeah. And said they were my name and my face, but then, you know, all this stuff to send me money, blah, blah, blah. And he sent all kinds of money. And yeah, yeah. I hate to be fatalistic about it. My, what, what I'm saying is we need real like IRL relationships, right? So that we you know in the lingo I know, so that when this happens and it's devastating, we, we have a group of people that we can fall back on. I think a lot of mm-hmm. young people, they don't really have that. They just have either online or these kind of ephemeral relationships with people. And when this happens, everything is lost, you know? And let me add something to that. I think the the girls, when they see this kind of stuff, I don't know that they've been equipped to kind of understand the levels of why it's wrong. Like, it's not just wrong because it's an invasion of privacy, but it is, it's taking the sort of the sanctity of sexuality, the body your personal identity, all of that, and um, and making it public and making it something that people can snicker about and do other sort of sexually mm-hmm. perverse mm-hmm. things too. Um, but but because they're not in that kind of community, they also I don't like they probably feel it at some level, but they don't know how to put words to why it's wrong. Yeah. Um, so I'm with you on building community and um, talking to kids early about this kind of stuff. So they know like, this is what is and isn't okay. Right. Yeah. So I, I, again, in so many ways, I think Mm -hmm. churches need to become, and it's like, it's so crazy to me that this is what the world needs so badly. And this is, and, and, and I see, you know, nothing but decline in church participation, um, unfortunately, but, you know, churches need to become community centers where people really know each other. Um, we really care about each other. Um, and we support each other when these sorts of things come, you yeah. know, maybe, maybe we have a lot, we, we need to build libraries, I think of, of good literature and good books. We need to have legal defense, t- you know, we need to have people prepared to, you know, defend us legally when these sorts of things happen. But I don't know. I kind of think that, um, this, um, is, I think it's coming for all of us unless maybe laws are changed and they, you know, they, they make the penalty so great that it's not going to happen. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit, um, I'm not very optimistic that, you know, we're going to, we're going to escape this. I think this is just the tip of the spear of what, what's going to happen. I will say, so we have, um, I, I think they'd be okay with me sharing this. We have some people on our team who have a little one, a little baby. And I posted a picture once, I don't know, six months ago of the baby at one of our events. And they said, take it down because we don't want her image out there for that kind of reason. And more and more, I'm like, "Mm, that's that's the other thing. That's the other thing I was going to say is we, you know, I was actually going to say my, my wife posts pictures of our, you know, teenagers, you know, online, they don't have any social media, but she put, and I, and I don't, yeah, you know, I don't use Facebook for that reason. And I tell her, I don't think you should do that because, you know, now they are, now their images can be used. She thinks I'm crazy. Well, so there gonna, might be truth somewhere in the middle of those two things, but, yeah. um, and I did the, used to be the, a marriage counselor so we can talk after the episode. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to be so let out, let, let out to say, you know, we, we go off the grid entirely from social media and things like that. But, but for people that are world. having kids now, yeah, the, I mean, like my kids are kind of aging out of, you know, the danger zone because they're becoming their own people that can post their own stuff, whatever, yeah. not becoming their own people, but, yeah. you know, adults. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, if you're having babies now, it might be something to think about. Yep. So yeah. Well, on to better news. <laughs> <laughs> there is no better news. Uh, Everything in the news is sad. Oh yeah. I promise I'm not going to take the whole time to talk about what's happening in Israel, but I have been, well, you, if you listen to the last white pill radio, you know, I have strong thoughts about what Israel should do to Hamas and anyone that supports Hamas. But Bringing it back over to sort of what's happening in America and in the West at large, I have been so sickened, saddened, and shocked. Look at me with all S's mm-hmm. at the pe- at people's response to Israel, to Hamas, to um, chanting, you know, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Um, all of that. I um, I was telling you yesterday 
that there's a, I follow somebody on Instagram who was just telling the story. This is a story that broke a couple days ago. Um, one of the people that's collecting all of the bodies and trying to figure out what happened in all of the, you know, October 7th terror attacks found a baby that had clearly been essentially baked in an oven. Um, now there's still some question about, was it put in the oven and the oven turned on? Was it, uh, and they don't know, but, but the evidence is that they put a baby in the oven. The baby was mm -hmm. baked alive in the oven and the wounds to show that. Um, and, and the person on Instagram was telling the story and just, and got choked up about it. And even I got choked up and I was talking to you yesterday and, um, all of the comments, probably like something like 85% of the comments. And this is just my own anecdotal. I was on mm -hmm. Instagram scrolling are all saying, you're a liar. This didn't happen. Check your sources. Um, and then they're like links to these articles that say this didn't happen. So I had to, and I had to dig hard to find the evidence that it actually did happen. This happened. And and we have it on, on multiple layers. We, there's, there's body cam uh, evidence from the Hamas soldier. And then, you know, the people that found the baby and, um, not to mention it's like all of the other things that Hamas has done that we now know of, they sort of corroborate that mm -hmm. they were doing terrible mm -hmm. things. You know, we have the, um, Anthony Blinken talked about the family where the, they cut the wife's breast off and then they cut fingers off the boy and all of these things before killing them and then sitting at their table to eat a meal. Like it, the evidence is out there that these things are happening, but people are denying it. And standing up for Hamas and saying that it's justified. There was just a crazy statistic that came out of, I think it was Lebanon, asking, do you think that what Hamas did on October 7th and the ensuing days was justified? And some staggering number, like more than 65% said, mm -hmm. yeah, it's justified. In America, a majority, I believe. Of, so yeah, now we yeah. have these universe. So the, the article, I have a couple articles that just kind of speak to this. There's, if you've heard that Cornell University, the FBI got involved because... Um, there were several online accounts that were saying terrible, threatening things about um, Jewish students. <clears throat> um, I, I have screenshots of a couple of them. Uh, if you see a Jew, this is a quote, if you see a Jewish, and they put person in quotes because they don't think of them as people, on campus, follow them home, slit their throats. Rats need to be eliminated from Cornell. A separate account. Maybe it's the same one using a separate account, but... Um, uh, it says that they're going to destroy, rape, and kill all the Jewish women. Um, different ones talked about them being pigs or rats that don't deserve to live. I mean, it goes on and on. Um, that's that is a, a just a, a university here in mm -hmm. America. And then there's all of these protests happening where you have the streets filling with people saying this phrase, which it, it rhymes in English. It does not rhyme in Arabic, but it is a phrase used to say that Israel needs to be eliminated in every way. From the river, that's the Jordan River, to the sea, that's the Mediterranean Sea, Palestine will be free. Now, that sounds sort of nice, Palestine being free. We want everyone to be free. But it's it's that Israel will no longer exist and its people will no longer exist. That's being shouted from all of these like enlightened Western cities. The whole thing is just so unbelievable to me. You have stories of Jewish students crouching in libraries or airports or different places where they've got people bullying them, beating on the door, saying they mm -hmm. want to kill them. There was just a, a a young man being bullied on a college campus yesterday, just surrounded by people that mm -hmm. said he deserved to die. What is happening? I don't understand. It feels pre-Holocaust mm -hmm. level hatred of the Jews. Ugh. Yeah. So I, a couple of thoughts. One is, um, so let, let's let, 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 let's go back to 9-11. Okay. So 9-11 happens and it's this Islamic attack mm -hmm. on America. I think we're all pretty united in America. I don't remember. I, I remember seeing video of some Muslims like overseas somewhere, you know, in Pakistan, maybe happy that this happened. But sure. there weren't people on college campuses saying, well, America deserved it. Right. No, Jeremiah. No, not Jeremiah. Um Maybe it's Jeremiah. Anyway, Barack Obama's pastor in, yeah, yeah. in Chicago. He talked about chickens coming home to roost, you know. Yeah. So that was kind of a famous thing that, you know, came out. But generally speaking, it was not as widespread as it is now where people are saying, well, actually, you know, these 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 Muslims have a good point. You know, yeah. it, maybe the Twin Towers should have been, you know, um, blown up with planes or whatever. Um, so what has changed in 20 years? Um is it is it that people hate Jews more? And I'm going to actually say I don't think so. I don't think so either. 
I think that we're living through the furthering of the oppressed oppressor worldview writ large. It has become deeper embedded into the culture, and it is now the lens through which a certain percentage of our population evaluates everything. Mm -hmm. Black, white, racism. Male, female. Male, yes, everything. I mean, gender, um, poverty, economics, race, class. Um, So Hamas... So what should have what should happen is that Hamas goes in October seventh, they kill all these people in such horrific fashion, and everyone is in agreement that this is unacceptable and we have to do whatever it takes to make sure this this never happens again. And then it's the opposite. I know. It's it's I, I've seen very few pro Israel things. In fact, there was the thing in the rotunda that we mentioned in the last episode. Um in Washington, D.C., that people initially thought was pro-Israel, and then they find out, no, it's, it's pro-Palestine. Um, and, of course, they interrupt proceedings, but none of them got arrested or you know sent off into gulags or anything like that. Um, so how could this happen? And I, I think I, I, my best answer is that we're, we're witnessing, we're living through this gigantic clash of worldviews where the world that you grew up in and I grew up in is disappearing rather mm-hmm. quickly where Christian social norms are. This is not a joke. The times really are changing. The Christian church needs to wake up. I don't think we need to become like Ken Hagee, like <laughs> like the, this is the sign of the apocalypse. I'm saying sure. that stuff out there, that's all ridiculous. I'm not saying we need to be pro-Israel in that way. Um, in that in that particular way. But we need to wake up that we can't even evaluate good and evil anymore because we don't have a, a, a Christian worldview. And and so what's the what's the solution? Well, there's there there needs to be this local solution of simply, you know, we've got to have I, I, I hate to be so pedantic about it, but like, you know, we have to we need many more individuals to come to assess their own moral worldview and understand you know that you can you can have Marxism, this oppressed oppressor worldview, evaluate everything, or you can have a biblical worldview. But mm-hmm. you cannot have both; mm-hmm. they are totally incompatible. Um, let me let me so. add to that the the sort of cultural Marxism that you're talking about, oppressed oppressor, where you it's almost like when you tell someone a story and you say, "Hey, a big bad evil person did this thing to a t- to someone that was innocent." The tendency now is to go, well, do we have all the information? Right. Let's go and what, the, maybe there's a moral equivalence. Maybe there's a both and. We love a both and. I'm sick of both and. Um, and so then we search it out and we look for, well, has there been oppression? Has there been colonization? And then the, the missing piece we haven't talked about yet is the media. And this is almost all media. And I, I was feeling crazy as I was looking things up. That I couldn't find media that said mm-hmm. what I knew was true. And then I saw this article this morning, and I just, it's one of many, but it says, uh, if you ask Google if Hamas rapes women, it will praise the terrorist group. And it's just, it's basically that they did a, a, a quick study of what's coming up on Google when you put things in. Like I, when I, that whole thing happened with the baking the baby, I went to Google, did Hamas bake a baby? I want to know. Let's fact check this. Everything that came up were liberal media sites, left wing, I guess I should say, liberal is a, is a confusing mm-hmm. word, that said, oh, we don't know, we don't really know, let's not go off of suspicion and rumor. Um, and, it, and then it did all what this article says, it gave me all these, do you mean? And it gave me suggested prompts, and they were like slightly different, like, why would Hamas feel the need to, or things like that? And so the article, and we can put it in the show notes, but- Why would Hamas need to put- Right, you know, need uh, to, uh, yeah. a, a ho- or feel oh, oppressed enough to, know, and put, that put, kind put of... rockets by a hospital or something like that, right? Yeah, well, or, the hospital yeah. thing is a joke, but yeah. but yeah, so so not, they're not burying that, yeah, it. Yeah. Oh, right, right. Not necessarily that story, but in general, they they hide munitions yes. and things like at schools and things yeah. like that. So basically, daring the Israelis to you know kill innocent civilians yeah. to knock out. Well, that's a, one of the a, searches yeah. that they talked about. If you search, does Hamas use people as human shields? It was like, well, Israel says so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, it is it is crazy. So I think we've seen a shift in media and probably born in its origin out of some kind of desire to make sure that every people group is heard and understood and that we're not glossing over maybe some nuances that are there. And I know that there have been evils on sort of both sides of almost any issue that we can talk about. That said, 
in this case, with what's happened to Hamas and Israel, it seems so clear to me that there is a bad guy, an evil, demonic regime, talk about oppressor, that is picking on and doing these horrible monstrosity atrocities mm -hmm. to a people that like for the most part have stayed put in their spot. There are not Jews living all over the world. And this is just one like destination location. This is it. I mean, America and a couple Western countries and then Israel, there are no Jews in any of these Arab countries. Um, there are plenty of Palestinians, by the way, that live in Israel, something and, like and, 20%. Yeah. And Egypt said something like, you know, we will fight to the death, you know, however many millions of us it takes to prevent Palestine from settling here. Literally none of the Muslim countries right. will take the Palestinians right. because they're so embedded, um, honeycombed is the word I keep hearing use, with Hamas or yeah. or supportive of Hamas or would then later be like a link to Hamas. Yeah. And by the way, Hamas is a is, is one faction of the Muslim Brotherhood, mm -hmm. um, which our own government refuses to designate as a terrorist organization, which would give us certain abilities to fight them. Um, you know, a lot of what's happened too, I think is interesting, is kind of going back to post 9-11 and, you know, all the rhetoric with like George Bush, you know, like, well, mm -hmm. Islam is a religion of peace. And <laughs> he even said something like Islam means peace. Well, no, it doesn't. It means struggle. Means struggle. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, we struggle or, against no, them. No, jihad means struggle. Uh, Islam means something like Allah is You're right. I ruler should, or I something should like that. that. Yeah. I can look it up, but yeah. Um, Anyway, I, I, it was like, well, it's only this, these, these. Certain hey guys, Sarah here. Sorry to interrupt the podcast. I know it was awesome, but I just wanted to tell you that Theology on Tap is growing. We are now a standalone ministry, an independent nonprofit, and to grow, we need your help. We're offering more live events, more follow-up opportunities to reach the unchurched, and increased partnerships with local churches. You can help us grow by praying for us, by telling your friends or church about us, and of course partnering with us financially. To donate, go to houstontot.com forward slash give. Okay, enjoy the rest of the show. These certain groups of Muslims, and of course, that, that is true to a degree. Um, but Hamas, uh, like one of the articles you said, said if, if there was an election today between the old like Palestine, you know, the PLA and Hamas, like Hamas would win in a landslide. Oh, so, yeah. You know, so it, they are supported. And yeah, I, 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 I at some point, I, again, I, I my solution is you have to make Hamas uh, the, the equivalent of MS-13 in El Salvador, where where it's an, an, it's an untenable position. This mm -hmm. is this is not a group that can be supported anymore. You can't so you can't be a Nazi in Germany. That's okay, right. so um, it's, see, burn it down. This yeah. is what I say. Yeah. So well, the 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 thing with the actual like warfare strategy of just bombing guys at a death so that makes it more difficult to actually do the job. It's yeah. it's the it's the problem with Stalingrad in World War II. They bombed the heck out of it, and then that led to many more deaths because sure. they were fighting over rubble. And and well, not and, to mention yeah. we have there's hostages in there somewhere in those yeah, yeah. tunnels, and yeah. you know innocent civilians that they're using on purpose. Do you know that some of the um, after this, I promise I'm going to stop and get no. to my white pill angle here, but that some of the news. Uh, first of all, none of our Western reporters can actually go into the Gaza Strip. They're being kept out. They're in Israel and still reporting things like, well, we don't have the full story. Like, anyway, but some of them are actually getting aerial footage, like drone footage of Israel's troops in the Gaza Strip and then reporting it back to Hamas. What in the actual yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, fill in the board there. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe look up Operation Mockingbird sometime and learn about the media and its mm. complicity and in intelligence gathering. It's been well, going on for a while. Let me just say one thing though, yeah. real fast, just to, as a highlight. To, to go back to this kind of worldview and the dialectic of like what's changed in twenty years, like why are college why why are college kids in favor of Hamas and it's this oppressed oppressor thing? And so obviously Israel is the oppressor and Hamas, you know. So it's um and and so that's look at all the strange bedfellows. Right. Look yeah. at look at the, you know, gays for Palestine the queer community. Yeah. yeah. Um, be, you know, or, you know, Antifa is uh, like has all these bizarre friends like they shouldn't have, you know, or like <laughs> they form alliances they shouldn't make. And you see this over and over again. It's like you don't have anything in common except this perceived understanding of who is a victim and who is an oppressor. So, um, yeah, but let's hear some good news. Well, Looks like I don't in the know Bible about good there. news, but I as I've been thinking about this whole Israel Hamas situation. It has given sort of a new, not a new lens, 
When you read passages in the Old Testament that are really hard to read about God being wrathful, we, we sometimes skip over those or we don't like them or we try to find a way to justify, well, God said this because da 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 um, I feel like I'm now seeing them in a way where I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, I get. I get why people would have been comforted to hear the words of the prophet speaking for the Lord saying, I am going to exact vengeance and it will be just against these evil powers. Um, and so I wanted to read a couple things that you might read with new eyes, given this, um, that, that are, I don't know if it's a white pill angle, but it's just true. And so that's. Truth that's, is always good. There we go. One is Isaiah five. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but Isaiah five at large is just this, um, prophecy about how, you know, God made these good people and he gave them good gifts and they turned against them and they followed pagan gods and they let all this kind of evil in. And so he will exact justice in, in lots of ways. But um, in verse 20, it says, Whoa, you've seen this maybe online. People have been posting it. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. The reason why that's hopeful to me is because I feel like a crazy person when I see people that are speaking these hateful things about Jewish people. Like, do you, did you always hate Jewish people? Like, what? What? What is happening? I feel like I'm looking at a white screen and it's black or it's, you know, left is right, up is down. But the Bible says, no, 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 call it what it is and the Lord will. And he's going to make these things right one day. Um, you can read the rest of that passage if you mm -hmm. want. It's long. I also take some comfort from, um, and I was going to mention this at our last podcast, but we didn't have time. When the entire story of, of Israel you know, being set up by God, when he's calling Abraham and he's going to, he says, you know, you're going to be the, you're going to, uh, stars in the sky will be like your children and I'm mm -hmm. going to build this nation. I'm going to give you this land. And you'll be blessed to be a blessing. It comes with this other piece, which I think we should take heed as believers in this God of Abraham, because it says, I will bless those who bless you and ever who curses you, I will curse and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. This promise has not stopped. Now, as, as you know, Protestant believers, we have different views about how Israel and the New Testament and the church all work out. And we don't need to get into that. But either way, the promise to Israel was a promise from the Lord that there would be ultimate blessing. There would be ultimate justice. That land belongs to them. And as those of us reading this, I think we're beholden to this. If we bless them, we'll be blessed. If we curse them, like woe to us. Um, okay. And then the last one is, and again, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but in Deuteronomy 32, you have this, it's kind of like a speech from Moses. Um, and it is one of those passages that probably before this whole thing, I would have read and gone, oh, I don't quite understand why that sounds so harsh, but I trust God. And one day I'll understand. But now I read it and I'm like, yes, come Lord Jesus and do this. Um, it's, it's starting with just like, if you do things the way I want you to, it'll go well for you. And if you don't, it's not going to. And, um, everyone has heard this phrase. We use it in movies and stuff, but, um, verse 43 is, it says, rejoice you nations with his people for he will avenge the blood of his servants. He will take vengeance on his enemies and make atonement for his land and people. Um, and I, so the, the vengeance is mine, saith the Lord is like uh -huh. the King James version of that. Um, it does give me some comfort to know that no matter if Israel is successful in wiping out Hamas or not, that someday, I hope sooner rather than later, but it'll be on God's timing. God will bring justice and people will pay for what they've done um, and this kind of evil. And God sees the whole picture. There's no masking it with media nonsense. And I don't know. I There's another verse. Verse 41 says, when I sharpen my flashing sword and my hand grasps it in judgment, I will take vengeance on my adversaries and repay those who hate me. Hamas hates the Lord. That's a that's 100 percent true. Yeah. Um, so I, these are harsh verses that normally I wouldn't read on the podcast, but I'm, I'm taking comfort because I know that the God of the universe that knows everything, he knows right and wrong. He creates, in a sense, what is right and wrong because he is perfect, will exact justice. And so if we have any, I don't know, uh, Jewish friends listening to the podcast, we are praying for you and we love you, but God loves you and is going to bring justice for you. Yeah. And that gives me comfort. Maybe, maybe a bizarre kind of white pill too is like, well, the, the idea of kind of like religious pluralism or, um, what's the stupid bumper sticker, you know, 
coexist. Yeah, yeah. Can we can we get past that? Like, can we stop <laughs> being elementary in in all of our thinking? You know, we're so rich and spoiled and lazy. It's like, you no. Know, it, for for you to say to a Muslim person that well your religion is just like mine is an mm-hmm. offense to them, mm-hmm. um, and and same for a Jewish person and uh, and and these tensions are very real, although you know uh, um, people might say well this is actually an economic or a political struggle or something like that at the end of the day. Um, in fact, I was just listening um, today to an interview by Rudy Zasser, who it, you've probably seen him on like maybe Fox News. He's kind of like a moderate Muslim trying to work for like a reformation within Islam. Hmm. He's running for Congress out in Arizona. And uh, anyway, and he was he was kind of but he was saying, well, here are these verses that say, you know, yes, you know, Muslims are going to kill Jews first and then Christians, mm-hmm. you know, um, and it, here's how it's defensible. And it, there are different hadiths that say different things. Mm-hmm. And it's not just the Quran and da da da. Anyway, um, but they take their religion very seriously. Mm-hmm. Like, so even if the average American football watching, no church going, you know, <laughs> hedonist who has been shown all this light and given all this blessing and they do nothing but give a middle finger to God, please come to our church one day. Um, even if that's how they choose to live, that isn't how other people in the world live. And there are real consequences, you know, for religious belief and for, you know, <laughs> for, for actual conviction. I guess I just wish that we you know, understood what we believe enough to have enough conviction to make sense of all this. And my concern is that we're just being, uh, so much of America is just being led around by the nose. You know, it's like, I don't know. It's interesting you talk about, I've thought about this, like, I want to live in one way. I want to live in a pluralistic society where people have freedom of thought, right? You can believe what you want to believe. And so, I mean, I'm, I have so many friends that are atheists and, um, and I would love them to know the Lord, but I love that they have the freedom to decide where mm-hmm. they land on things. But you, th- that changes when you start acting on beliefs that are evil. When you mm-hmm. start acting on things and you're exacting violence, then, you know, that there should be consequences to that. America is a free country that only works when free people choose to do the right thing. It was, you know, Mm -hmm. very famously said, you know, this constitution is only for a, you know, a religious and virtuous Mm -hmm. people or something. I think John Adams said that. And there are many other quotes. Oh, there's so many. I've been doing the deep dive recently on freedom of speech um, because, yeah, because of all this. So again, yeah, freedom is not the goal. You know, free, this is, this is, yeah. this is you going to talk about major political sweeping movements and whatnot. I mean, in many respects, the conservative movement was kind of swayed by libertarianism, economic libertarianism, like the Milton Friedman, you know, isms of the world, but also this kind of idea of like ultimate free speech and like ultimate freedom. And, you know, a lot of that is crumbling right before mm-hmm. our very eyes. Conservatism mm-hmm. now we're realizing, oh, we've been fighting for liberty. We've been fighting for freedom. No, you use liberty and freedom to fight for the world that you want. And if it's majority good. christian world go for it and, yeah. oh you're a christian nationalist or even the, you know? the morals and ethics of christianity sure um yeah well i don't yes but i don't I, I don't think you can extract the morals and ethics without the explicit uh allegiance you know so yeah well that's no, I'm interesting not, i'm not saying people i'm not saying we command people sure i'm i'm saying i but what but I, that's my, where it comes from yeah yeah for sure so okay yeah Okay. Well, let's yes, move on. It's, that's it's, a whole it, interesting. It, it is shocking to see. It, it is. It is shocking now. This I, actually, this this thing is put kind of people on the left in like a box because you can tell they're like going, they're like doing the calculations in their head. Like, well, I know that Israel's the victim here, but I also know that they're more powerful. So Hamas is actually the victim. They're trying to figure out who's the victim. It's like yeah. that's not how you judge things. That's right. That's the problem with the oppressed oppressor being the, uh, it's kind of like, you know, Lutherans talk about law and gospel and there's this, oh, really? I, I hadn't noticed. Yeah. And there's yeah. this idea that like, well, law and gospel is the interpretive lens you put on every page of scripture. And I'm like, that is so stupid. You know, <laughs> um, it's just, you heard it first here, Lutherans. Yeah. Well, I get in trouble for things like that, <laughs> but come to his church. No, but you for sure should come Well, to his you'll, church. you'll get a unique take on things maybe, uh, from in the Lutheran camp. Anyway. Okay, this is kind of related. I'll, yeah. I'll try to go over this quickly. It's just amazing to me. We're probably living through an Crazy. era of something like four to five million, you know, illegal immigrants coming into our country a year. Uh, it's not an accident. It's not a. Um, it should be. It's not. A, it's not a coincidence. These. These are. This is a policy. 
And every now and then the current administration will say, well, we're going to send 800 troops down to the southern border. And people are like, oh, finally, they're doing something about it. And then uh, the next day we realize, actually, they're just there to process the people in faster, right? Texas has put up this kind of razor wire to try to keep people from crossing the border. And so this is a story from admittedly a, a you know, a site that's, you know, opposed to illegal immigration called Border Hawk. And uh, basically they capture the moment where Border Patrol – that's United States Border Patrol, not Texas Border Patrol, used yeah. heavy machinery uh, to raise concertina wire erected by Texas authorities just as a group of more than 300 illegal aliens arrived in the area and stormed the riverbank at Eagle Pass, Texas. So basically, this gets into constitutional crisis. This gets into states' rights versus federal rights. I mean, who really owns the border? Is it, you know, does Texas own its border or does the United States own that border? Uh, of course, being a Texan, I think Texas does. Um, Greg Abbott did declare a while back an, an invasion, which gives him certain kinds of like rights and authority to use. Mm -hmm. I don't know. the. And the there's been some, some like legal bills passed to like not take down any more wall. Yeah. In, Tex in the Texas border. Yeah. I mean, there have been some victories. But on the other hand, this was an interesting take I'd not heard of. Someone was talking about, I can't remember who it was, but someone involved in this world of the border world. And they basically said so many states receive so much federal money, right, that they basically are constantly threatened. Well, if you do this, you'll lose your federal money. So whether it's the Department of Education or Department mm -hmm. of Energy or what, whatever department it is where federal tax money goes to individual states doled out like candy and you have state budgets that are like 40 percent federal funds. Oof, so yeah. now how do you how do you have state sovereignty? Well, you really yeah. don't No. So this the systems, <laughs> the systems are so out of control. So many of our f systems in this country are so out of control. The reform needed is so massive. I don't even think we can grasp it. But this is just an example where you literally have a state saying, we don't want people coming into our country illegally. And, um, you know, and the federal government says, well, we don't care. Here's a bulldozer to lift up the wire to let people in. And they were just miraculously there at that time. I mean, there was a huge number waiting for that event to happen. Yeah. Like, are you even a country if you basically say to people who, you know, I'm sure are very fine people, um, but they don't speak your language? Oh, can you say that anymore? Can a country have a language, but they don't share your culture? Can we say that anymore? Can we have a culture? You know, but if, if they don't share your kind of uniquely American values because we won't defend them anymore, then is it a good thing to be letting in these people? Um, you know, I, uh, so I have a couple of questions. Let me, let me, let me just add, I have some rhetorical questions for you. Can and I, I have an them? actual question for you. Okay. okay. Um, and by the way, um, before I get to those questions, just real fast, I, I have proposed this as a theology on tap event yeah. and it loses in the polls. <laughs> it loses in the so, polls. So I think our audience, they, I, these are the things I think we do need to be talking about. I think, because I think you can make a Christian case for something like migration or open mm -hmm. migration. Mm -hmm. It's not a case I would agree with, but, um, but for example, uh, we read in uh, Leviticus 19, when a stranger sojourns with you in your land, you should not do him any wrong. Or uh, Matthew uh, 25, for I was hungry and you gave me food. I was mm -hmm. thirsty, you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. That's from the words of Jesus himself. Mm -hmm. So people can take that and say, aha, well, you should be open to immigration. I would say, well, well, that's, you know, kind of one person at a time. I think that's a little bit different from whole invasions. In fact, I think you can see, um, you look at Isaiah's prophecy, you know, up in the north, he was warning of the Assyrian invasion and Jeremiah's prophecy in the south was looking at the Babylonian invasion. Now, I'm not saying that war, you know, warfare is coming across the southern border, but when you're talking about more people in one year than the entire number of people in the state of Delaware, and that's happening every year for the last three years, well, you know, and to tie it into the Israel Hamas thing, obviously, I think it's we've we've caught known terrorists. So how many have gotten away? Yeah. How many people intending to do so? How many sleeper cells da, 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 are getting populated with people coming across that we can't keep track of? Not only we can't keep track of, we don't want to keep them out. We're trying to get them in as fast as possible. Why? Yeah. It makes no sense. So here's my question. Okay. I mean, I'd like to have that biblical debate because I think we need to actually get to a place where we can say as Christians with confidence, no, you can defend your country. You can mm -hmm. keep people out of your country. That's actually how you love your neighbor because that's the other side of it. Hmm. How are our public schools doing these days? <laughs> You're asking the wrong person. Do, do we have enough teachers? Do we have enough buildings? Do we have adequate resources? Do, do, no. te do teachers, oh, it's rhetorical. Sorry. Do, do teachers have to spend their 
own money salaries on materials in the classroom. Are these all rhetorical? These are all rhetorical. Okay. The, the, um, Amanda, my wife. picking up on the snark in his voice. Amanda showed me something the other day. The percentage of HISD, Houston Independent School District teachers that are looking to like quit next year is like mm-hmm. 40 or 50%. Yeah. It's crazy. They already have a huge shortage. Mm-hmm. And so all over the country, we have people all over the country now going to be getting this free education that costs us eight to $10,000 per student per year. And now we're going to have all these other people. And we, and the, and the public school system is literally falling apart right before our eyes. So that's a well, question. And, but, you know, Houston, right outside Houston, is one of the, these the giant like, cities, yes. right. which are being built like, I, I, like they're not even fully finishing these houses and people are just moving in by these large swaths. And then there's like crime. I mean, what's it called? Eagle's Nest or something? Not um, <laughs> yeah, that, that's where Hitler uh, <laughs> uh, ran. Uh, uh, that's you know. a poor choice of. But guesses. if you do go to Germany, do check out Eagle's Nest. It's worth it. It was really cool. Um Canyon. I, I can't remember. Yes, Something yes. that sounds very Texas. It's a colonia. They're all over. There's like a hundred thousand people that live there. They're almost all illegally in America. And we, it, it, it's we we're having uh, in the in the Muslim world. These are called no go zones. So like Dearborn, Michigan has whole areas like right where like police don't go in there. It's self governed. You know. And in Europe, there's in fact this was so controversial to say to even say it would get you banned on social media and other big time media like in Europe like no go zones. Um, Is that so, like an autonomous zone? Like chop chaz. It, 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 actually, it is. It yeah. is actually a lot like that, where they have Sharia law and they enforce it, Jeez. and they, you know, they have kind of their own like courts, and they kind of run their own thing. And the authorities are like, oh, okay, whatever, you know. So, Goodness. okay. So, how are our public schools these days? Um, how, how about our hospitals? How about our? I mean, how about how's our medical system? Is it going to hold up to this? I mean, people go to the ER for a, you know a cold. Um, you know, if people don't have regular doctors, and you know, what about housing? It, uh, do we have enough housing? Um, yes, these are rhetorical questions. Yeah, <laughs> okay. that's why I'm being okay. silent. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, we obviously have a housing shortage if the market is telling me that I couldn't afford my own house if I had to buy it now. Not even close. You know, thankfully, I bought it 12, 13 years ago. So we obviously, I think, don't have enough housing, and yet we have to house millions and millions and millions more people. Um, what about the impact of wages on the working class? The, the church is supposed to be is supposed to care about the poor, right? The, mm-hmm. the, the church is supposed to care about the working poor, the, the, the working class, the people who, you know, have dirt underneath their fingernails and want to work for an honest wage. I mean, what's going to happen when people will work for half their wage for a cash price? And the corporations, by the way, are all too happy, which is why both parties want this immigration to happen, which is why nobody will make it stop. Wow. Um, And then finally, uh, are we guarding against the psychopathic criminals or the terrorists that are entering the border? Because we all or drug, think drug cartels, drug cartels, human trafficking, sex trafficking. I think it's pretty common knowledge now that these uh, South American countries are opening up their prisons and like, go north, go north. Mm -hmm. So we have to deal with those people. Um, that's sorry the thing that if actually, that sounds really harsh, but no, that's the thing that actually causes me the most, cause I've felt myself be on sort of both sides of this issue, right? The bleeding heart in me wants everyone to be able to have what I have in America, the freedoms I have in America. And, but the part of me that sees the, the, you know, the graph, like the numbers go up as all of the illegal immigration is happening. And then the fentanyl crisis is just, and the sex trafficking, they're following the exact same trajectory. Like that's yeah. not a coincidence. Yeah. And that gives me pause. So I don't know. I guess when I think about maybe our audience or how Christians should think about this sort of thing, I, 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 I don't think people are aware of the magnitude of the problem. I don't think – and you couple this with the fact that we are probably already insolvent as a nation. We're not going to have the tools to sort of solve these sorts of problems. I mean the clock is really ticking on mm-hmm. you know on us being a kind of recognizable nation much longer. Um and that that really does trouble me. What what's the white? Let me let no me ask hope. you a non rhetorical question. Yes, since Texas border is one of the places where this is happening the most, if Texas decided, you know what, screw it, we're seceding, we're going to be our own country, we're closing down the border, we'll be our own nation, and we're not part of America anymore, what would you think about that? Um. <clears throat> well. As would I'm, you still live here? As I'm, as I'm drift, what I still live here, like the whole country would move here. You know, what are you talking about? Like, uh, it would be a, it would be the biggest boon for Texas that one could possibly imagine. Um, 
So, um, yes, when I'm drifting off to sleep and I need to think happy thoughts, I imagine a future where Texas has seceded from this great, great country. Look, I love America. I teach our kids, you know, about the revolution. And, you know, I just read a couple of books about the Revolutionary War and World War One, and, you know, the bravery of our soldiers and what it took to like, in, like the genius of our founding. There's so much mm-hmm. to love about America. I love our grit. I love our people. I But... You know, but we but we don't teach love of country anymore, and we have entire generations, multiple now, who don't love America, who think America is a colonizing power, who think America is the oppressor, and the rest of the world is oppressed. I mean, this is what Barack Obama was taught. He had a communist mentor. He went to these schools. I mean, we we know where these people come from. We know where he went to church. We know what he heard. They hate America. They think America is the is the problem, not the solution. So. We, we are schizophrenic yeah. as, as, a, as a nation right now. So, um, so, so leaving what America is, is not a difficult thing for me to imagine right. at all. It'd be difficult if it was what America was. Yes. Yeah. And w- could there be a group of states? Of course, now people are going to be like, oh, he's like a Southerner as they're melting Robert E. Lee's head a, f- a few weeks ago. Right. Um, you know, uh, but are there, are there a number of states that, um, you know, would be more than happy to secede and basically refound, you know, just like copy and paste the Constitution, right? right, right? right. Like just a reset. We'll just, yeah, we'll just a take the Declaration reset, and the Constitution. Yes, yes. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, I mean, um, it's what's crazy, though, is that probably to even say something like the word secession and, and, and ultimately, it's like no, saying I, the, the word divorce than a marriage, like, yeah, even well, actually, you, you know? you'll, you'll be accused of like sedition. Yeah, because look, you want to get real. Let's get real. OK, right now, <laughs> right now, the former president of the United States is on trial mm-hmm. in Colorado to take his name off the ballot. Why? Because he violated the 14th Amendment. Supposedly, he yeah. he encouraged an insurrection, an unarmed, unplanned insurrection where he tried to get the National Guard. Regardless, an insurrection that makes him a 14th Amendment style Southern rebel who's trying to overthrow the government. Crazy. Therefore, he can't govern. He can't even be on a ballot. That's going to be happening in other states right now. Mm-hmm. And so there are people out there like they hate that they, they they spit on the floor every time, you know, his name is said. And it's like, but do you understand what's what's really going on here where they use these things as pretext? They now. So if you even say, yeah, I'd like to secede, they say you're you're unloyal to the country as it is. You're a criminal. We're going to put you in jail. Of course, that's how they treated the South. This is why I'm asking you. I'm not going to say what I think on air because I don't want to go to jail. Yeah. Well, I'm, well, I will say when I first visited Texas. This was when I was in college. It was the first time I ever flew on an airplane. I won an a, like a, a rhetoric award and I got to present at this conference in San Antonio. Yeah, I know. It was actually a paper about the rhetoric of Jesus and I got to per, like do it at this communications conference. And the lady that was like my like Sherpa of all things Texas, she drove me places and was like, I don't know, she was in, my handler or mm-hmm. something. Um, she like her whole thing was, oh yeah, Texas is ready at any minute to secede. We have, and this is what she listed and I loved it. She was like, we have bluebell ice cream. So we're set there. (laughs) And then she was like, and we have cattle for days. Like we, like we have all this land for farming and all of these animals and like, and oil, we'd be fine. (laughs) We could be be extremely self-sustaining. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's like a, been a, a matter of pride for Texas since I've known about Texas, even before I lived here. I would, you know, I, 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 there are various movements. The greater Idaho movement is one where like Eastern Washington is looking to merge with Idaho. Um, you have new California to become the 51st state, which is basically California minus like, you know, LA and San Francisco. Um, so there are movements, you know, where people are looking to form new states and like forming the merge. And, and, and I think that there are things that can be done, you know, without going that far, because let's be real, like, I mean, Joe Biden has said it himself. Oh, you know, you, you want to have a militia? Well, you better have an F-15, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's literally saying, um, oh, you think, you know, Abraham Lincoln had an army at his disposal? Well, let me tell you, you know, we have F-35. So good luck with that whole sedition thing. Um I, I, I don't know. I, yeah. you know. I realize it's a little more complicated than my yeah. retor- not so rhetorical question. But, but I, I, anyway. I'd like I'd like to live in freedom without being afraid of my government. I'll put it that way. Yeah. So. Nice. OK. Um, we had I think we went a whole episode last time without talking about trans issues. So. So. So let's do it now. Yeah. OK. Um, so I have two ones. Not really an article. It's just a website. But um, I was made aware of this situation 
about um, it's another uh, athletic situation, but instead of it being, uh, you know, a man claiming that he's a transgender woman and, and competing against women, it's trans age because you can be any age you want to be, which is great news for me because I for sure want to be younger than I am. But um, there's, there's a story that trans age is the next new thing uh, about this 50 year old five zero fifty. That's older than both of us transgender swimmer competing with teenage girls. And I'm not going to read the whole article, but the, in essence, he won. Um, which is, I mean, I, like, it's, I'm only laughing because what else can you do? It's just so crazy. Um, and then one of the little links on there is to a page, a website about trans age. It looks like transage. In fact, if you Google it, the first question is, is transage, does that have anything to do with transportation? <laughs> no. Um, it's trans age. There's a trans age flag. It has different colors. And those colors mean different things about sort of the brackets that you identify with. You can identify as older or younger. Um, I will say, just to, to be fair, there's a question on their FAQ about um, – and, and it says it right here, can, can trans age kids, so that's an adult that claims to be a child, date chrono kids, meaning kids that are, this would be like the cisgender oh of age, <laughs> sorry. So, so chrono, chrono is chrono, what you actually yeah, are. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Can trans age, can adults date children is the question. And to their credit, they say, oh goodness, no, because there are some, um, there are some uh, sexual and ethical differences mm -hmm. Uh, that remain even though, I mean, so they're basically saying the true thing. Like you, this isn't actually real. Well, they're trans to, age phobic then. Oh, you're right. Aren't they? So that's, and then I'm sure they don't at some really point believe it. that will come off of the website. I mean, that's, you can't follow this to its logical conclusion and stay there. But for now it says, no, 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 this is just for them to experience life in this new identity. Um, and yeah, that's the story. And it's a real story. Like it's not, yeah, it's from, up. it's from Canada. Rebel news, uh, is a kind of highly banned, um, you know, uh, conservative kind of news outlet up there in Canada. I saw this, uh, the other day. So yeah. Um, so I have a solution to this. Okay. Let's hear your solution. First of all, these are 13 and 14 year old girls. Yes. With parents, with parents. Uh huh. Um, they should not be competing in this. The yeah. moment you find out. Okay, that some man is going to be competing with girls or mm -hmm. older man or even older woman, yeah. you know, for that, you know, so I mean, what, anything that's what is, to, or what, what is to stop a 19 year old, you know, college athlete, yeah. say, as good as like, say, Riley Gaines competing with 13 or 14 year old girls? Yeah. What, what's to stop it? If there's trans age, there's trans, yeah. there's, there's no limits on any of this anymore. But you have to, um, the parents have to say, well, honey, I know we've invested thousands of dollars in your swimming and this meet is really important to you, but we're all going to pull out. Let the yeah. man, let the man swim strength. his laps by himself in the <laughs> pool, you know, and, and this is what must be done. It is the only solution. We, this is, this is an example where we keep waiting for, oh, will someone pass a law or someone do something or the politicians are crazy. Yeah. They're, they're, they're totally bought off. You, we've got to stop participating in the insanity. Mm -hmm. And if there's no competition, then there's nothing for them to compete. Yeah. So the moment that you find out that a man is competing against you women, just or, stop. Yeah. Just stop. Stop living in the delusion and giving them the platform. Yeah. And I, I think that's what has to be done. I'm starting to see that happening here and there, but um, I'm starting to see like, you know, like, like early retirements. Um, you know, people are saying I'm done. Like the, yeah. my sport is ruined. Like a 28 year old cyclist a few months back, I saw retired. It's like, I've, did this race and was beaten by a man, did this race, was beaten by a man, you know, and coming in fourth place is, you know, or second place or whatever, it, it ends my career because, yeah. you know, I'm not making a lot of money here on the kind of amateur circuit, you know, trying to get sponsorships. And if I can't get first place because I'm beaten out by a man, what's the point? So she's saying, I'm not going to compete. Yeah. And unfortunately, that's what we're going to have to do. Make them, make them go in the circle on the, on the bicycle track by themselves <laughs> and look like a fool. Yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting. Several years ago, I was a little less conservative than I am now. And I had a couple people in my life that were more conservative. And they said, Sarah, if you follow these, the, these trends to their logical conclusions, at some point, this was, let's call it 10 years ago. At some point, you're going to have things like the beginning of pedophilia or people saying they're different um, races or people saying they're different ages. And I thought then, no, people won't do that. 
that's crazy. That's too far. And of course, now we've seen that. We've seen people identifying as Korean and getting, you know, surgeries to have their eyes look more Korean. And we've seen all of, I mean, the, what, what's the term now for fear? Something attracted, youth attracted. Maps. Uh, yes. Minor attracted persons. Yeah. That's what it is. All of those things, because the logical conclusion is bearing out. And so I almost wish that I had been more, well, my eyes were a little bit more open then. And that I, I don't, I'm not saying that people should be harsh, but we should say the truth mm -hmm. and we should not be embarrassed or ashamed. We can say it kindly and graciously and with love and compassion and worry for people that are this confused. But I think to be able to say what's true, this man is not a woman and this 50 year old is not a 13 year old. Those things just aren't true. And how inappropriate. I mean, yeah, I mean, like, I don't know what the, what the dressing room situation was. It, you know, well, if you read room. the rest of the article, it wasn't great. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, it's, it's, it's a form of collective insanity and it must stop. And Christians have nothing to be ashamed of when we say what I just said, this is insanity and it must stop. Yeah. It is intolerable and I won't put up with it. And I will, I will do whatever I have to do to pull my kids out of the situation, to boycott, to yeah. not buy a product. You have to do whatever you have to do. Do not be embarrassed and do not be ashamed. If there's, I hope what this show does to our theology on tap audience is we are, encouraging them to, you know, really live out their Christian worldview, mm -hmm. you know, because that's kind of the point of this particular show is like, let's put meat to bones here. And um, there is no toleration for this in my view. So yeah, agreed. And these are these are issues that people can vote on too, especially if you're voting locally for various propositions. Yeah. Um, so, to, so, tomorrow, so um, tomorrow, as an example, uh, I and my son, he doesn't know this yet, he will be block walking with me for a candidate for HISD. Um, you know, so get involved. Like um, if you if you think there's a, a candidate for in fact, uh, I learned when I went to vote or I got my sample ballot, actually, that um, I'm going to be redistricted next year. They moved hmm. the districts around because the census, which was done like three years ago. Anyway, they're just now redistricting. So the candidate I'm working for is not even going to be on my ballot, even though I was certain that they were. And the candidate who is for my district is running unopposed. And they are very left wing, pro LGBT in schools and all of this sort of stuff. And that's my district. Hmm. And I'm like, well, if I would have known, you know, I'd have made my wife run for school board. I you made know? my wife. Yeah. That's not a thing that um, happens in that family. But it, but it, but the idea that it's like run, running unopposed is crazy. That is crazy. You know, there's no alternative for people like me to vote. So, um, so yes, people need to get off their couch and get involved. Find a candidate. You know, I do think it's a cliche, but it's true. Think globally, act locally. You know, work on getting good people on your school board. Put signs in yards. Go door to door. Um, Even just encourage contribute. your friends to vote. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Remind them that it's voting time. This yeah. is basically me saying, hey, it's okay to take a selfie with the I voted sticker on and post it on Instagram to remind other. I actually had someone that it said, thank you for posting that because it reminded me I need yeah. to get out and vote. Yeah. So, yay. Um, okay. Selfies last for the win. Last story. I'm going to do this super fast. It, I I, I'm, I'm not a friend. I'm not a friends fan that the show. Um, who, who, how, you're so cranky. How are you not a friends fan? It was a great show. Was it? Yes. Did you actually watch it? I thought it was a little scandalous you know well it was like a little these, scandalous all these people time. kind of sleeping around and whatnot well um, yeah i was a seinfeld fan at seinfeld's the time. great and um i don't know how much i like seinfeld now but at the time i liked i liked it and i i saw friends like encroaching on its territory oh uh, yes because it was and, the new up and coming yeah so um <laughs> okay, anyway. so allegiance to seinfeld Got but it. but the, you know matthew perry recently died yeah. in his hot tubs quite sad very sudden and um but there are a couple of things that came out of it. One is I found the story um, on Christian Post, which he basically talked about, of course, he had done 14 stints in rehab. Mm -hmm. He had 15 stomach surgeries and a lot of attempts at detoxing. He had, you know, struggled with drugs Addiction, and alcohol yeah. for years. He said three years of the friends. He didn't even remember. You know, he just hmm. it's hard to believe that. I mean, did you notice anything weird about him when you were watching Friends? Like, no. he seems a little off, which is amazing, you know, but he didn't even remember sort of these whole years. He was he was doing so many drugs and that's all sad. But he talks about how he turned to God in desperation. And as I read this article, this is this is typical of the way we talk about God that bothers me. And um, if our mutual friend um, were here, our Trinitarian friend. Oh, Jim Stern. Um, Jim Stern. If he were here, he would he would be nodding in approval. I'm I'm certain of it. Okay. <laughs> but you know this vague way that we talk about things that I think Christians ought not to do. 
Um, so he's, he talks about how he calls he, it the God blob, the so God blob. Does, yes. Yeah. Yes. So Matthew Perry was talking about how he was basically going to die. He had a very low chance of surviving this particular surgery. And he says that he had an experience where God mm-hmm. was present. He said, God saved my life that day. And I had been in the presence of God and I was certain of it. And he, you know, he talks about this in an interview, I guess, with, you know, Diane Sawyer in 2022. And, um, he said that was the first time I ever prayed, which is shocking to think about you're a 30 something year old person very successful you've lived all of this life and you've never prayed well and that's not true because he in another interview said that he prayed early on that god would give him celebrity status oh make him famous wow yeah i listened to a podcast and and the guy was like be careful what you ask and 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 the demon said okay well you know um anyway that's complicated but yes yeah anyway so Anyway, so the way that he talks about God being so generic is, I think, a, a bit of a problem. But I also, there was another article I read that talked about, like, how lonely he was. Mm-hmm. And, you know, how even though you're famous and people love you and all of this and you have lots of money, you can, that can also isolate you, mm-hmm. you know, because you're not sure who you can trust. And you've probably had people glob onto you and mm-hmm. use you and fa- you lose family members because they just want you for money and you don't know who you can trust. And, it's just emblematic of the time in which we live where people are withdrawing from the church, which, again, as I said, that is the solution to all of our problems is more people need to go to church. <laughs> and they need to form real community with real people that they really know. And I'm thinking, wow, I mean, if this guy stepped foot in a church, you know, like and it was a good church, mm-hmm. a real Bible believing church, church yeah. you know, like he could have really found that. Yeah. W- would he have viewed that as like lowering himself or was it hard for him to do that because he was a celebrity? Is it possible that a famous person can could could go into like a real church and just be like a normal person hmm. and, you know, kind of find purpose and meaning in life, which he seems to maybe, I don't know, maybe he had it, maybe he didn't. Um, but it just makes me sad, you know, to yeah. think about like people being that lonely. Um, and he's a famous case, so it's something we can talk about. But there are so many people like that. Um, it seems to me that there's a – and I – I realize this is a a drum that I bang all the time, but with the way that he talks about God and the way that so many people in today's culture, American culture, at least talk about God, it's the the first thing that you think of is yourself. And then you think, well, what do I need or what do I want? It's sort of, there's no atheist in foxholes. So Mm -hmm. I'm going to pray when I'm in a time of crisis, which, Hey, that's, you should do that. You should pray when you're in a time of crisis. But, um, but it's like, I need help. What can I do? Um, I'm going to look within, I'm going to sort of reach out to this God blob and hope that he gives me um, fame or brings me through the surgery, whatever. The whole Christian message is that you are not enough and that you can't save yourself and you can't make yourself feel um, unlonely, happy, peaceful, joyful, all these things. You need something outside of yourself. And so it's not about making your life better and giving more allegiance to your own self and your own desires. It's switching your yeah. allegiance to this other kingdom, to this other person who actually has the power to do those things for you. And that's what frustrates me when I hear any, it's not just Matthew Perry. When mm-hmm. I hear anybody talk about, well, oh yeah, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of God. He's, <laughs> he's done this for me and that for me. And, and, and God has done amazing things for you. Every good gift comes from him. But the number one thing he did was rescue you from yourself. Um, and, and that's like the message that I wish people could hear. And this is why I want them to go to church. Cause I want them yeah. to hear like, you need something from without yourself. You need a life raft. And the wonderful news is that that life raft is there and it's free. Yeah. But but you do have to switch your cosmic allegiance from yourself to something else. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So if you're out there listening and you don't have a church home. We have one. so many represented yeah. with Theology on Tap. Absolutely. We can give you a, a smorgasbord to try. And you can learn more about Theology on Tap, so named for now, at HoustonTOT.com. Maybe, you know, maybe someone will be listening to this in a year a year from now, and they'll be like, what is Theology on Tap? Because um, by then we'll be so rebranded uh-huh, yeah. to something else. But anyway. I think for a while we're going to be the artist formerly known as Theology on Tap. I think so. No matter what our new name is. Yeah. Well, hopefully we weren't too spicy. Hopefully there is some hope found in this. It does seem to be a tense time and lots of dark stories out there. But, but speak the truth. No God that coming is coming for justice. Go to church. Yeah, for sure. People can find more about you, your own social media, yeah. Sarah and Garmin. Anything they want to know about both of us is on the Houston TOT page on the leadership page. Awesome. So you can find our churches and what we think about things and 
stalk us, you know. Well, until next time, we encourage you to question freely, think deeply, and disagree as needed.